Good day and welcome back to this epic journey of covering all the buttons in Autodesk Inventor. I've been putting off this one and uh, for good reason as well because it's massive. Uh, we're looking at the freeform tools. We're in part mode, IPT. We're looking at the 3D model tab and the create freeform panel. If it seems like I'm rushing and hurrying through all the buttons, it's because I am, mate. It's not a tutorial. It's not a guide. It's not a follow me along. I can't explain how each button can be used in different circumstances. It's literally just, a, oh, look, this button does that and move on to the next type of a thing. And if you want to see more from this series, check out the playlist. I've covered all the buttons up until this point, And today, indeed, we're looking at Freeform. Freeform Tools is uh, otherwise known as the T-Spline technology, which Autodesk acquired back in 2011. It was the spawn of Th Fusion 360. And it's an inventor is the freeform models read. So there's three ways of starting off a freeform model. You've got your primitives, uh, you've got face, and you've got convert. So we'll start with convert. What this does is it lets you pick an existing face on an existing solid object, and it will convert that face into freeform segments, and then you can off your trot with the freeform tools. That's what uh, convert does, right? And we've got face. A face will allow you to create your own freeform segments, no less, by going click, 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 and click. And then you can use edge mode to further define extra freeform segments like that. All right, that's face. And then we have uh, the primitives, of course. We've got box, plane, cylinder, sphere, torus, and quad ball. They all do exactly the same thing, except at the end you end up with a different primitive. So a box, you'd select the floor, you'd select the center point, uh, you select how many subdivisions you want per length, width, and height, and then you put up with the infuriating bug that's in the dialog box, which prevents you from typing in more than three numbers. Uh, so if you want a length of 100, what you have to do every single time, and there's no way to avoid it, is you press the first number and what you'll find is your cursor jumps from here to after the units which is infuriating so 100 results in this every time even when you know it's coming mate it gets you every time it gets you every time it's infuriating so 75 will result in 75 <laughs> come on water desk for the love of god man I've, I've complained about this many times. Let's just fix it and just get on with it and move on with our lives. And uh, there's your box. Okay, so that's uh, that's a freeform box. In addition to freeform box, you've also got plane, which rather than give you a, a box, you get a flat plane, which can be subdivided up into segments as such. And, uh, and off you trot. And the same applies for the rest of them. I don't need to go through the rest of them. You'll know what they do. Uh, the commands work in the exact same way. All right, then. So once you've got your freeform started, in, it'll jump you off into the freeform environment. And then you've got all these buttons here, which we need to go through. And this is why I've been putting it off because there's so goddamn many of them. Right. We've covered these three. We've just looked at those. Right. Edit form. Edit form is the most common button in the entire range of freeform tools. You find yourself use this one more than all the others. Edit form lets you pick a face, an edge or a point, and it will give you a triad with some grip points which let you rotate the face, scale the face, or move the face, or if you hold down shift, more than one face. Uh, but you hold the left mouse button down and you pull and you can manipulate the freeform object like that. That's what edit form does. This is how you ultimately sculpt and create whatever it is you want to create is by using edit form. There's a whole range of buttons in here which are for a different day. Uh, I'm just covering the buttons on the ribbon bar. So that's edit form. Right, then we've got a line form. A line form allows you to take your freeform object and move it to another face. Like, right, I'll have to, I'll have to actually create a face for it to do that, right? So here's a work plane here. Uh, and then a line form, for example, using vertexes, you can go, right, move this entire thing based on that point there and move it to there. And it'll do that. It moves the whole thing from that point to that point to that plane. That's what a line form does. Uh, you've got a delete. Delete face will take its free form faces or edges or whatever, whatever it'll let you pick. Uh, and it'll also mirror the delete based on the symmetry. So all of these gray faces will be deleted. Uh, click OK. And it'll delete those free form segments and it'll try and heal it up as best as it can uh, after you've done the delete. Uh, insert point and insert edge. Right, what this does is it lets you pick a, a free form edge 
and it will offset a new edge across into that segment based on this location value. So that's uh, 0 0.5 is one half. So it'll place a new edge halfway along that segment. There you go. And then we've got insert point. Insert point will allow you to pick a point on an edge and it'll break that edge into two edges. So you've now got extra edit points for create or edit form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so that's insert point and insert edge. We've got subdivide. That will take a freeform segment and it will break it up. It'll subdivide it into either two by two, three by three, however many faces you want via length and width. Pick your face and there you go, there's your subdivision. Like that, again, more points to edit. All right, then we've got merge edges. Merge edges will allow you to take, uh, it doesn't always work, it depends on the geometry that you've got, but it takes uh, an edge and it will try and merge that edge together with an existing edge like that. Uh, and it'll sort of morph and deform the shape based on uh, on the geometry around it. It's, it's like one of those things where if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But it will just try, it try and closes the gap between them. It doesn't create material. It sort of folds the edges together so that they're touching each other. That's why you've ended up with this kind of weird uh, tube sort of opening. It's just taking the two edges and and kind of folded them inwards to touch each other so that's merge edges uh we've got unweld edges uh this will this this kind of like splits it splits the the object based on a like a loop of edges so like i can say unweld double click this edge here and then click ok and then what it's done is it's it's actually detached this bottom half from this top half so if we were to do like say uh, a line now and we were to pick that edge there and then that target plane, uh, you can see that sort of completely detached it. So that's unweld edges. It is very niche, but uh, it, uh, that's what it does. Right, then we've got crease edges. Crease edges will take a loop of edges and it will create a crease line, which is one continuous edge. And you can see it's kind of pinched the edges here if it was doing undo. Uh, that's what it does. It, creates uh, a crease line all the way around so that's now one continuous edge in a way uh, but it's yeah they're creased any edits that are made will it will retain this crease line all the way around so it's one way of sort of building integrity into the model via a, a crease line and then of course you can uncrease them just by double clicking that creased edge and there you go right weld vertices will take two points and it will try and pinch them together like that and then it'll solve the model around if it can do. Well, there you are. It's uh, weld vertices. Flatten will take uh, points and entities, and it will try and bring them down to a face. It, it's like leveling them, which it's like oh god. I, uh, so if I was to create a word plane here, uh, I, it's it's diff it's just really difficult to do this because it's this this is nothing. What it, what it is I'm doing here is nothing. It doesn't exist. So I'm trying to explain something where in the, the example is just not real. But we can take say that point and that point, and then we can bring them down to that plane there. You see what I mean? And it will try its best to sort of level them down to uh, to as close to that plane as possible, uh, which it's not done a very good job of doing because they're certainly not in line with that plane, but. Uh, it's certainly leveled them off. So flatten, take that point and take that point and then bring them down to here. Yeah, still not doing a very good job of bringing them all the way down, but it's, I think it's bringing them down as far as it can do before the model will fail, I would assume. But but there you go. Right, then we've got bridge. Bridge will take... Uh, this. This is kind of like merge but it will create material in between two sections. So you can say bridge uh, from here to here. This is gonna fail, I've got absolutely no doubt about it. Bridge to here to here. Oh, well, God damn it, was not expecting that to happen. <laughs> that worked quite well. So that's, that's created material between those two edge sets and formed a bridge between the two of them. And uh, whatever this is, it's looking pretty dark there. I'm liking the look of this. Right, we've got match edge. Match edge will take uh, like a sketch, like a, a shaped sketch, and it will try and loft from the freeform to the uh, to the sketch. So what we'll probably have to do here is create a sketch. So allow me to let's uh, create a sketch. See here, and we'll do a, a rectangle. Uh, say 
so big, something like that, whatever. Uh, again, no idea if this is going to work, but we'll make the sketch happen before the form. And we'll go to match edge, right? So for the edges, I'll see if I can loop select all of those and then go to this target. Go on. That's wow. An actual genuine wow. That's impressive. Seriously, that was impressive. I did not expect that to work. But there you go. That's match edge. Wow. That is really, really, really impressive. Okay, then we've got Thicken. Thicken will take your entire freeform entity, which at the moment is just thin walled. Excuse me? So yeah, Thicken will take your entire freeform object, which at the moment is just a thin walled entity. There is no mass or anything to it. And it will just thicken it by a distance of your choosing. So let's say 0 0.25 or 0. Uh, 0 0.5 or 0 0.25 pick up the entire body and it will try and convert that into a solid entity. And if this works, I will be very, very pleased. Yep, it's worked. That's looking pretty good. So if we do click finish freeform now, we've now got whatever this is. I don't care. It looks amazing. That looks absolutely quality. Try doing that with normal extrudes, revolves, sweeps and lofts and you'll be on it for days, mate. That would be pretty impossible to do without freeform. Okay, right, then we've got uh, the, uh, the the rest of the tools are all modification tools. Uh, I've already covered work features, so we're not going to look at those. Right, so we'll start with symmetry, right? So for this, we're going to have to create something new because I've already got symmetry programmed into this. So we'll just do a box and we'll keep the uh, we'll keep the standard size as I'll do. We'll not program in any symmetry. So with symmetry, what you do is you select two faces like that and then it creates this yellow dotted line. Now that's indicating a line of symmetry. So anything that you do on one side is immediately symmetried over to the other side. That's not even a word. Right, then we've got mirror. So what mirror does is it will mirror the entire body around uh, a, a mirror line or a mirror plane. So we'll have to create ourselves a work plane. Let's go, say, here, and then just say mirror, mirror that body over that plane. And then there you go. Uh, anything that you do on this side should be mirrored over onto the other side like that. So I'd... Uh, yeah, yeah, it gives you it gives you good control. This is how people make cars, mate. Make cars in freeform and, and model stuff. That's quite complex, but symmetrical uh, using mirrors and symmetry. Then you can obviously clear symmetry line by selecting an object and it'll clear that line of symmetry off there and there. All right, then we've got add distance. Add distance is a little bit misleading because the tooltip says it sets a minimum distance, which suggests that it restricts you from making changes that contradict this distance but it actually doesn't all it does is it puts a driven dimension on so you'll select add distance pick an edge pick a plane and then uh, it puts a dimension on and that's it it's just a reference dimension you can still move the model around and that dimension will update and it'll show you what the distance is between that edge and that plane but it's not stopping anything from happening it's not saying the edge can't be less or more than that dis that distance so a little bit misleading tooltip but that's what add distance does then we've got make uniform make uniform says makes all star point intervals uniform i have no idea what that means but when you click it stuff just looks smoother <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it's doing. I really don't know. But you can see if we do an undo, it 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 does something to all the faces. It makes them uniform. Apparently, I don't know what that means, but uh, it, it there's probably some kind of algorithm behind it. Right, we've got toggle smooth, and we've got toggle uh, toggle smooth on and off. But you can see what it's doing there. It's actually making all the faces hard edges. It just gives you better visibility as to you know the contours and the angles of things and. To turn that on and off and it smooths everything out uh, toggle translucent will make everything go see-through so you can see on the internals of your freeform translucent on and off and select through is uh, is quite a useful one actually it's if when you put in a window around stuff it'll select things that are behind the, the the window so you can see here when I do a window it's picking everything behind like that but with that turned off it won't do that it'll just pick up the things that were in the foreground Okay, that's it. That's all the freeform tools. Oh my god, that was that was really quite difficult. <laughs> it was unnecessarily difficult to go through all of those, mate, but we got there in the end. We did indeed get there in the end. That's all the freeform tools. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed this, then check out all the other videos in the playlist. 
we've 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 looked at everything up to the freeform tools so in the next one we'll look at the surface tools and uh, and then on and on and on until we eventually cover every button in autodesk inventor all right mate that'll do it for this one thank you very much and i'll see you in the next one toodles <laughs>